everybody, and welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. This is presented by our friends at Show X. We're here at the beautiful Cutting Room in Midtown Manhattan today with Tatiana De Maria. Tatiana, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Bradley. Yeah, absolutely. It's wonderful to meet you in person. We did the virtual thing, and now we're doing it for real. It's virtual for everybody else still, but we're in the same room. That's right, man. That's right. We get it real time. That's right. That is right. This is a total pleasure. Thank you for being here. We're about to share your music with the internet. A lot of it. What's happening first today? Um, I'm going to play a song called Guilt Free Heart, uh, which is coming out in a few weeks. I'd release this under the name What It Is About You. So it's a studio track that's out already. But um, playing it acoustic, it just felt a little bit different. So changed the name for this one to Guilt Free Heart. And uh, yeah, out in a few weeks. Will you look so pretty with your guilt free heart? Smiling like you mean it. I want to tear you apart and I don't know what it is. you through not one of them past my lips a silent love I had. my heart knew I wouldn't be back again my head battle reason only to give in it don't mean I let you go so easily I watch you now with ease you see I must remember to forget you must remember to forget you when you look so pretty when you guilt free She suits you beautifully like you suit her beautifully And when you fuck, I know you think of me Well, isn't this what you wanted? You swallowed me whole and drowned me out With bottles and lovers and time steady, I know I said, isn't this what you wanted? Yeah, I must remember to forget you To the others, born with the street lovers, lucky fuckers who are born straight out of others. So are you far too short to reach? Well, you look so pretty with your guilt free heart, smiling like you mean it. I wanna tear you apart and I don't know what it is about you. Well, you look so This reminds me of uh, when I first started playing with my band and would play to the three members of Bar Staff <laughs> when I was about 15. This is fucking awesome. Yeah, it is. Well, we're happy to provide that callback to a, uh, to a simpler time for you. That feels awesome to be in an audience. Even it, though it's an audience of four, man, I feel great here clapping for you on an actual beautiful dude, stage. Dude, it's wonderful in a, in a being in a venue again. Water place. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, and this, uh, so the uh, acoustic music that you're playing today and the music that's found on Acoustic Sessions, um, the, the EP, is um, in contrast to a lot of the more, uh, more electronic and more fully produced and fully arranged stuff that you've done. 
as the, as is evidenced by the upcoming album, which I'm, I don't, I don't know how much we can say publicly and how much we can't. So I'll completely leave it in your court, but can you compare and contrast the way the upcoming music sounds versus what we're hearing today in this session? Um, yeah, absolutely. The, well, the acoustic sessions EP is out, uh, in February, um, 18th or 26th. Um, I'll be posting about that on my socials. Come find me online. But um, yeah, I've got a few singles out of that. And then the last of it and the rest of the EP will be out in February. And it's different to the album in the sense that I, um, the album's fully produced. So I write and produce in a bunch of different styles for different things. And um, my production style tends to be a blend of all my influences in general, stuff I grew up on from hip hop to punk rock to just everything in between to pop, to melodies, hooks, space, lyrics. So um, between while I was getting the sound down for my solo stuff, I was playing a lot of acoustic shows and it kind of took on a life of its own. And it's something I love doing, just showing up with a guitar, stripping it back to what the song and songwriting is, is kind of one of my favorite things to do. So I take advantage to put out acoustic EPs where I can. But then I'm currently finishing up the album now. Um, there might be a st oops, sorry, studio EP in the middle as well. So there's a lot of music to come, 2021. Uh, but you can check out my Spotify to see some of the varying styles. And yeah, I can't wait. I'm super fucking excited. Yeah, yeah, to we are too. We'll stay, we'll stay tuned, man. I'm, uh, I am definitely partial to the... I mean, I like everything that you've done between the, the full, more fully arranged, but also the acoustic stuff. But this Thanks, is, man. this was my introduction to your music. I've seen you more than any other artist during, during lockdown because <laughs> we've, we've done these things. And so you, my introduction to your music was more of an acoustic vibe and it sounds tremendous like this, but uh, also can't wait for the, uh, for the more fully produced stuff to come out. Cause I am sure that, that will be equally delightful. And, um, Thank you, as is this session, there's still a lot more of your music to share with the internet. What do you feel like doing second today? Um, I'm going to play this song that's out already. It's called London Don't Lie. Feel free to go find it. Where are the cameras? I want to ominously look you all in the fucking eye. <laughs> Which one's the close-up? Damn it. If there's poison in this cup, she still offers it up. Then she tells me it's your life And darling, it's your luck Ain't so desperate to be liked or To be loved Ain't crave to validate in mind She don't need your love London, I don't lie London, I don't lie London, don't lie Don't lie, no, no she don't trust the ugly truth to make a white tea shine. She don't blow me in a fire and tell me I'll be fine. She pulls back the curtain, clears the smoke, and shows me a mirror standing clear to see myself the way she sees. Smiling faces, treading places I just don't buy I've tasted lust and fucked the words of feigning wise In part, I've walked the earth in search of something I was looking for Only to come home and find my heartbeat in her eyes
You're a little unsteady, steady. You're a little unsteady, steady. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is a lot of fun, man. You are are vibrating the space in the way that it is meant to be vibrated in, and it hasn't been vibrated that much lately. Um, this, I've been between, vibrated between this. <laughs> almost took a took a interesting detour there. I was trying. <laughs> we was, um, yeah. so the cutting room between this iteration of it, and it used to be on Twenty Fourth Street, mm -hmm. um, but between the two places, I mean, Lady Gaga and Billy Joel and Tony Bennett have played here. Like, there's been a lot of positive vibration in this place. Um, and you, um, and you mentioned some of the styles that have have influenced your music. Can you talk about some of the specific artists that have been important to you over the years? Oh gosh, I mean, you know, the younger you are, the more it ingrains itself in your subconscious, and. Uh, I think for me it was The Clash, a lot of The Clash, um, Tupac, Michael Jackson, just stuff when I was a kid, kid. And I, I used to, my dad actually used to take us in the car on a Sunday and drive us around London and just play these big 80s hits. And um, now that I look back, it's hysterical, but he would drive around and just play things like um, Total Eclipse of the Heart, whatever was big, even Opus's life is life. So there was always just melodies, 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 whether it was in the car or whether it was through the house. And um, yeah, they just kind of permeated, I guess. I used to go to sleep uh, when I was about 10, 11. I would, I was 11, 12 actually, my uncle got me a stereo and I could finally play music just in my room as I could, I was really happy. And so every night going to sleep, I would just blast no effects. I would blast The Clash, I would blast Rancid, I would just, blast shit Metallica and um, my parents would walk past my room at one two in the morning and I'd be sleeping to this shit just blasting so I think a lot of it just fed my subconscious and, and that's really where it comes from it's a lot of rock a lot of hip-hop and a lot of pop for me it's about the substance in the lyrics really marrying with the melody and then feeling something authentic in the music and I think those genres generally fed that part of me that took me back to, I mean, that's a very imprintable age. I mean, I remember my shitty Sony dual cassette deck that I was able to to copy uh, the tracks from Smells Like Teen Spirit and Tom Petty and the, and the Greatest Hits and make Were my own Were you doing tape this and, off the radio, um, mixtape? Sometimes off the radio, but also sometimes from the single to my own mixtape. And that was, there's a level of freedom there, man. That was, uh, that was, those are some fun times. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's, it, in, listening to music now, I find interesting because when you used to pop in a CD and commit to an album, you were in it, you know, you committed to it, you had to get up. If you were lying in your bed, enjoying the songs, daydreaming, masturbating, I don't know what the fuck you were doing, but enjoying the music, if you wanted to skip until CD changes came out, you had to get up and go change that shit. So, um, so yeah, it's a different experience um, for sure, for sure these days. I think hunting for music is also an interesting pastime now, so yeah. Is there, does your stuff come out in, in physical formats? I mean, are, you, are you making <clears throat> vinyl, cassettes, compact discs, that kind yes. of stuff? Or is, yep. So I have two vinyl, well, that were out. We've sold out now. Um, Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. I'm stoked. Yeah. Uh, we had um, uh, Soho Lights from my band Tats, that uh, vinyl. And then I had a, my first uh, sort of a short EP limited edition vinyl I did. But I'm probably going to be doing an acoustic um, album vinyl coming, I'll have the album and potentially an EP. So I do like to release everything in physical form wherever I can. Obviously with not touring now, it's a bit different to do that. Um, but we've got a bunch of things in my merch store uh, at the moment. So also feel free to check that out. Um, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, there's a lot more music coming up. We're going to do one. You're going to do one more on the acoustic guitar before we switch over into uh, into baby, baby grand land. Um, what's coming up third on the guitar today? Um, I'm going to play a song I have only ever really played at a few of my live shows. Well, I've played a lot of my live shows, but I have a have an online um, TDM social club, a fan club, and the. The fans and members bother me every week um, and every month I play about playing this song as to some of my friends, Bobes. So um, this one's called Become What I Deserve, which will be on my album coming out very soon.
If it's all already written Why am I so scared If it happens for a reason Why am I not prepared I become what I deserve now With every breath and every word I become what I deserve I become what I deserve With every breath and every word I become what I deserve For the salt that's on my lips And the love that I might give For the love that I might give now are you willing to take a risk? I become what I deserve now With every breath and every word I become what I deserve With every breath and every word I become what I deserve With every breath and every word I become what I deserve Did I stop believing in Hope won't pull you back into the light Oh, when I stop believing In love that will not die In love that will not die And I stand to my reflection And see what I've become A shadow of myself now A projection I have shown on all four walls around me, I'm drowning in myself. I still can't hear my voice now, and I'm crying out for help. I'm far too fucking young for this, and I'm picking up the pieces. Directions just can suck the jig. My faith is all I needed. There's still a life to live in this. If it's the last thing that I sing. If it's the last thing that. The good, the bad, the ugly We become what we deserve We become what we deserve right. Thank you Thank you Yeah, that one's a lot of fun to hear, hopefully I mean, it seems like it's a lot of fun to play the as well fuck? At the same time, what is that? Ha! <sighs> huh. This whole set, I've been like, why is this pick so hard? It's because it's twice as thick as I wanted it to be <laughs> Sorry, side note. Yes, hello. A hundred percent on pick tosses today. Uh, Brand Brendan from Weedus tossed his pick all the way across the stage. So hopefully we can keep that up throughout the day. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, I, we we chatted about this a couple, maybe two months ago. But for mm. anybody who's not aware, who's uh, uh, watching this stream, I think that the the new installment of the American Pie franchise more merits uh, a mention here. So you're on, like half the soundtrack is you and you're in the movie too. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, about how that came to be and what that experience was like? I mean, that's, a, that's an I iconic franchise in this country and worldwide. That's huge. You're you're in it. I'm not in that movie. You're in that movie and you're all over well, the soundtrack damn, man. as well. I'm sorry we didn't get you in that movie. Uh, I know, I would have been good. Handsome face should got you in, man. Um, I, uh, how did it come about? I got a call from the director, Mike Elliott. Um, he called me and said, hey, I have a movie and I would love for you to do the soundtrack for it. And I was like, 
cool, what's the movie? And uh, he, <laughs> he has, he's very funny when he calls. Uh, he sounds, he's just like, hey, so uh, I've got this movie. Uh, and I'm just like, what the fuck is the guy doing on the other end? Is he dying? Is he thinking? What's... <laughs> and um, anyway, so it turned out to be American Pie, which was great. And uh, the team on Universal are awesome. It was really fun to work with everybody. I was on set and bumped into my friend um, Darren Barnett as well, which was random to see him in it too. Um, so just, it all came together. There was a lot of familiarity and I'd worked with Mike Elliott, the director, on another movie. I'd done another soundtrack for him a few years prior um, for Blue Crush 2. So it was just fairly organic how it came about. And then we were in a meeting and we were talking about putting a band in, in their last scene, in their prom scene. And uh, we went on for half an hour and I'm like, what about this, what about that? And Mike was just sort of side-eyeing me and at the end he was like, <laughs> can you like find people? And I was like, do you want me to just, should I just do it? <laughs> and he was like, I've been trying to get you to say that for a half hour. He's like, I've just been, I was like, fucking ask, dickhead. Um, so anyway, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, so there's a bunch of the soundtracks. So I wrote and produced um, a bunch of songs. There's eight songs of mine on the soundtrack, including the next one I'm gonna play. I put a remix of it on it to fit the scene. So it's a bit more of a 2010s remix in the movie itself. Um, and then I'm playing uh, American Girl on stage at their prom. But anyway, the next one's called Push Up. That is on the soundtrack. This will also be out on my album. Uh, I've been playing it for a while, but uh, obviously the album version is going to be very different to either the piano or the um, American Pie version. Nice. Get to it. Nice. Yeah, please. We can't wait to hear it. While you're making the, uh, the transition over to the piano, I'm going to do some camera stuff, and then we'll be uh, back with the internet in like 30 seconds with some music. Are we not live at the moment? No, we're totally live. Oh. Yeah, I shouldn't have phrased it that way. Sorry. No, that's cool. Well, can I still get some tequila? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just literally whatever you want. Oh, we're on the Thank you for having me, Paste Magazine. The cutting room. <laughs> no, it's a pleasure to be here. Brad and I did a live show, uh, as he was saying a couple of months ago, which was really fun. I have to say the most different thing about doing lives and quarantine in general is mainly just when you're going on tour, you're planning the tour, you know you're going on tour. You prep for tour, you rehearse for tour, you get your voice in shape for tour. But uh, with this, it's like you're recording in the studio, you're blasting out vocals, and then the next thing you know, you're rushing off to a show. They're just different head spaces. But, um, but it's actually really interesting and different to do it this way and fun. I've enjoyed 2020. Thank you, everybody who's been tuning in every time. Thank you, everybody who's tuned in today. And I'm ready whenever you are, Bradley. We are all set. All right. I wish I could see some comments and respond. Well, what's up, everybody? Sending love. <clears throat> all right. Come find me on socials. Follow me on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram, all that jazz. I would love to find a bunch of you new people and feel free to check out my shit and my new stuff coming up. Ah, oh, you see you want me, push up on me, come and get me. Ah, oh, you see you want me, push up on me, come and get me. You see you want me, push up on me, come and get me. Ah. Oh, you say you want me, push up on me, come and get me, call it the right time for the wrong behavior. I'll make you old on tight. Fire up a white heart light, wanna see it all now in plain sight, plain mind. Sweeter than lies we're trusting, sweeter than bondage breaks. The one that pays me, keep your whisper. Surrender to half we house you up me, darling. 
Tatiana De Maria, thank you so much for coming and doing it. It's wonderful to meet you in person this time. Uh, your music is delightful. Thank you for sharing it with us, and uh, we'll stay tuned. And uh, as as new music is announced, which is happening momentarily. Yes, thank you for having me back, Brad. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you for having <laughs> me back, Brad. It's lovely to meet you in the flesh. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, to anyone who saw this stuff on my Instagram and tuned in, thank you. I love you guys. I miss you, and I can't wait to tour again. Um, and uh, yeah, to anyone who's just discovering me for the first time, thank you for getting it this far. If you have and watching my set, I appreciate you. And feel free to come find me at Tatiana De Maria anywhere. I've got an acoustic EP coming out in February. I've got an album coming out this year and um, a bunch of other stuff. So thank you and thank you Paste Magazine again for having me. <laughs> 